A few weeks ago, I put up the UDB switch, the Unified Device Brit switch, and there were a lot of comments, in particular, about the install of an indoor switch outdoors. So in this video, we're gonna fix it with the Flex Utility Pro box case thing. Yes, this is the Flex Utility Pro case, and apparently it fits the UDB switch. Yeah, and uh, thank you to all the ones that um, commented, including Clay Archer from DPC Technology. Um, go check out his channel if you haven't already. Clay knows everything about Unified Seams. So uh, he just messaged and said, or commented and said, hey, consider using this, so I will. Yes, because Yes, I am a bit scared about this being outside because obviously it's <clears throat> indoor rated, I expect. So if we put it in a outdoor rated box, we should be fine. And apparently the signal from it should be all right. So there's a few things I wanna fix in this video based on your comments. And I also wanna answer some of the questions that you had specifically um, about the switch and maybe some of the quirks. So um, this is a bit of a follow up to that video as well as we'll have a look at the Flex Utility Pro box. So um, I think first off, let's just get this out of the box and let's just see what we are actually dealing with. New box, of course you know what that means. <laughs> Whee! So this is, well, it's just a box, but it's kind of neat. It is IPX6 rated, so it's not rated for dust for some reason, but it is for liquids. And it is a, it's 1.6 kilos it says, polycarbonate. So it's sort of pretty hefty. Let's just have a look at it here. And we have, of course, nice hinge there. And there's the box. So we have a rubber, like, um, what's that called? The thing, you know, so we don't get water in it. That's nice. And at the bottom we have these, um, obviously exits for power or larger cables and for the smaller Cat6 cables. And also what it comes with is of course mounting for this. So in the box, there are these two, we get two mounting plates and I'll get to this in just a second here. So here we have two, which is neat. I didn't actually realize this when I got it. So uh, I think that one goes in there. We can mount the power supply on that. And then we put this on top and that's where the switch goes. And obviously the cables comes out here, etc. And then we have outdoor rated stuff, which is nice. Um, there is a mounting bracket here, which goes for the back. So we're going to put that up on the wall there, like that. And then there's a whole lot of screws and whatnot as usual. And a um, thing for mounting on the pole and a spirit level. I think that's it. Yep. So it's a box. So I think let's put that on the wall and fix the install. So we got the Flex Utility Pro box thing case. Um, but just before we uh, put the UDB switch inside of it, I just want to comment on that because it, the first video was very popular and there was a million comments, which amazing. I love the comments and I think I replied to almost all of them. Um, but for this, I made a claim. I thought this was the most important um, unified device since the UDM SE, UDM, UDM Pro, like the Dream Machines. And I still think that, yeah, I haven't changed my mind. I'll, there were some comments say, yeah, this technology has been around for 20 years. Yes, but it didn't work, right? So I think Unify has nailed this and actually made it work because this has not skipped a beat. It's been running for about four weeks now, four or five weeks. Um, and it hasn't missed anything. It's sitting here in an old shed. There's tin around it. The Wi-Fi signal is not far away, but you know, it's farm Wi-Fi and it just, it just works. But it just works. Now I'll get to some of the questions and comments at the end of the video that you all put, but I just wanted to reiterate, I think this is one of the best devices that Unify has put out for a long time. And there was a few of you as well, the comments saying, hey, this is a perfect device to have in a toolkit. If you're a professional installer, this will solve a lot of problems in scenarios where you go, oh crap, I can't get the cable to it, or I don't want to, or the customer doesn't, or whatever. It is so versatile, because you can also connect it via uh, Cat6, remember, that it just works almost everywhere. It's brilliant. So I want to stick with that opinion. Um, but let's uh, put this up on the wall and we'll uh, 
mount this inside of it and then I'll show you a bit more. We're going to change the setup a little bit from the first video on where things are. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll come back and we'll talk more about some of the questions that you had in the comments. installed the uh, UDB switch is inside looks really neat I'm very pleased with this it looks very good um, so now might be a good time to subscribe to the channel this is at the end of the year we got like I'm recording this on the 29th of December so it's like two days left of the year so I'm not gonna make it to 50,000 but any help would be appreciated and hopefully we can get to 50,000 next year that's the plan anyway so um yeah, and also check out the merch. You can get this in my defense. It was DNS and other many other things. I'll become a member. There's many ways you can support the channel if you want to, so I can keep doing these videos. Um, but that's in. UDB switch is in. Um, I just wanted to uh, comment, well, comment on some comments, I think, because there was quite a few of you went, hang on, you just put a Wi Fi switch in, connected an access point to it, and what's the point? because the access point would give the switch connection. And you're absolutely right. You can do that as well. Now, I was just trying to show many things you can do with the switch, right? And maybe that wasn't the best example, but that's what I did. Although, if you put an access point to a switch, the access point has to work as Wi-Fi connection for all the devices. It has to be the uplink for everything. And it has to do switching things between the two, right? So by using a dedicated device, you are sort of separating the responsibilities and each device does what it's great at, right? So there is some logic to it, but you're absolutely right. You could have a switch that isn't a device bridge and just um, connect an access point to it and you would get a similar result. Absolutely. Um, and of course the install is now fixed. So yeah, there was a few that went, hang on, that's an outdoor, that's not an outdoor device, but we fixed that now, right? Yeah, excellent. So now, before we get to some of the questions that you had, the last part of the remodeling of the install is, I'm gonna move the access point, right? So the access point that's connected to this is just above me here. And some said, oh, it's a bit close to the other one that's just around the corner. So I'm gonna take that access point and I'm gonna put it on that end of the shed and blast out over the paddock so we get more Wi-Fi on the property. And yes, I know, why would you have Wi-Fi on the property? Well, because we don't have mobile connection. So it's actually our mobile connection wherever we are on the property. So it's pretty important that we have Wi-Fi in a lot of cases. So that's next. We're gonna move that access point way down there and then I'll be back. All right, I have moved the U7 outdoor to the end of the shed and it actually works really well. Like I'm showing you on these screenshots, um, I used to have really crap Wi-Fi signal in there, in there as it turned out because obviously the access point was up against the tin wall and the signal was bouncing and it just wasn't great. So moving it about 15 meters to the end of the shed has just made a huge difference. So uh, yay for that. And then I thought, I hadn't actually planned on this, let's do like a range test and see how much we get out of it, right? So I've gone down here the end of the property almost, there's maybe another, oh, I don't know, 30 meters or something left, 50 meters. Um, and just wanted to see what we could do maybe with range tests and stuff. So as you can see here on Google Maps, I am 358 meters, give or take, from where I've installed the access point. So I'm pretty damn far away. Now, if you wanna know more about range and speeds and everything for the U7 Outdoor, I did make a dedicated video for that. So go and check that out as well. Um, but yeah, we're 358-ish meters away. And if I go to Wi-Fi Man here, you can see I am connected to the Hay Shed U7. I am on Llamas in the Fastland, which is my Wi-Fi or my SSID. And you can see I'm, I don't have a great signal. I mean, 
it says that here, you know, that it's fair. So the spectrum of 2.4 gigahertz is the only thing that will reach that far. Obviously, I don't get the speed from that. And also, it's connected via Wi-Fi <laughs> to another access point, which is on a nano station link, which is 100 megabit as it is. So, you know, there's a lot of considerations and limitations, but I do have connection here and I can look at Facebook. I don't know. I have signal to do stuff, right? Um, so we can see here the radio potential. Yes, we're on Wi-Fi 7 and you can see that the channel health is not great because 2.4 gigahertz is so crowded where I am. It just isn't great, the, the utilization of it. That's just, you just get a lot of noise on, on 2.4 when you have this many IoT devices. I've learned to live with it. But I do have some. I mean, we can do a speed test just for fun, but don't expect a lot at all. So I'll press the button here. We'll test the internet speed. Uh, this is to the device. Yeah, this is to my device. I'm getting eight megabit. <laughs> Not a lot, but it's a lot better than it was 10 years ago when I moved in here, just saying. Um, so 358 meters away from the access point, I still get seven megabit down and pff, one up maybe. It's not like I'm gonna upload files from down here, but it does mean that we have coverage all the way down here, almost to the neighbors, um, where I can now, well, I have connection to people on the farm and if something happens, I have, you know, because there's no mobile coverage, as you can see on the screen. Um, hooray, I'm really good with that. See, I thought I'll just give you that little bonus in this video. Um, I just made it up on the spot. So let's go back to the um, Flex switch, switch flex pro case. Let's go back to where I put the case up and we'll take some of the questions you had in the last video. I want to answer some of the questions that you had in the comments. Um, there were a few questions that were very popular <laughs> or you asked a lot. I've already answered the one with why you would have a wireless access point on a wireless bridge, right? You can just have or a switch with a wireless access point but I covered that before. But there's a few here. The, mo the most probably relevant, I think, question was, does it support wireless wired uplink with a wireless failover? So yes, the device bridge switch, again, say that 10 times fast, um, does support a wired uplink. So you can plug your cable into it, your 10 gig or whatever, and it will use that as the uplink. And then I believe I haven't attested this because obviously I don't have a cable here, but according to the comments, yes, it will fail over to Wi-Fi if that connection dies. That is pretty cool. So please, in this video, do confirm if that's true or not, but I believe that is correct based on all the comments and what I can read online, right? But let me know. Um, there is no access point built in, right? Even though it has wireless connection, it does not provide an access point. It is not that much of an all-in-one device. I'm not sure how that would work because you would have interference with the radio and it would be much bigger and it would get hot and cooling, blah, 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 blah. This does not have an access point, right? You cannot connect your wireless device to it. It is just for uplink, right? Um, an external antenna, 100% I agree, an external antenna would be so welcome. So on the UDB, the device bridge, the original one, the one with one port, it does have an external antenna and I have used that to get, like in this case, the signal from outside of the metal shed. Uh, that would be very welcome on this if we could attach an, an external antenna. Please Unify, do make a version with that. That would be even more useful. Very, very cool. Because then you can have the antenna outside and the device inside, etc, etc. Um, and no, it does not have 2.4 gigahertz. It does not connect by 2.4 gigahertz. A few people, actually quite a few people said, oh, be nice if it was 2.4 because the range would be much bigger. I don't think that's the point. The point of this is um, connectivity to lots of ports. There's eight ports on this thing. So lots of devices. 2.4 gigahertz just doesn't provide the bandwidth. Range, yes. But I don't think range is a problem with this device. It's more, oh, it's in the garage and I can't get a cable to it. Or, oh, it's the you know, neighbor's property and I just want to connect and give him whatever it might be. It won't be far distances, I think. It's much more relevant to connect it via 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz, which also gives you a better user experience because 2.4 gigahertz is kind of old and kind of crap. Everything older and every single IoT device ever connects on 2.4. So using five and six just makes sense. 
Um, so those were the main questions that you had in the comments. Of course, feel free to put more questions in this video because I do like the questions. As you've seen, I've replied to almost all comments, at least all the ones that deserve it. Deserve? Anyway, there are some comments that are silly, but I like the silly ones. Keep them coming. Um, <laughs> And if you do enjoy these videos and updates and devices and farm installs and whatever it might be, robots, um, do consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you part of the community. So uh, that's it for this time. I hope you had a great Christmas and you have a brilliant New Year's because I think this video will come out just on New Year's Eve's day or something like that. Um, so thank you so much for watching in 2025. I appreciate your support. I really do. And uh, I will see you in 2026 for a lot more farm projects and robots and devices and no, no smart toilets. No, no.